our gentlemen. There is our territory. 43,000 acres of Andera de Marche, and as you observe, scarcely a solitary acre of it under the plough. Quite disgraceful. Where's this place Portenoy we're supposed to be making for? Uh, that must be the church away over there in the trees. Oughtn't we to consult the county agricultural exec first? After all, we are butting in on their job, aren't we? Unfortunately, Fisherwick, these marsh people refuse to recognize any authority. They claim to have some ridiculous charter from some old king granting them independence. I believe that's correct, Prudder. Henry III, to be precise. Of course, it has no legal meaning these days. The ministry is the supreme authority here as everywhere else. Nevertheless, they persist with an idiotic charter they call the Corporation of the Liberty of Anderida Marsh. I think it might be tactful to approach them in the first instance. It sounds rather fun. Depends on your sense of humor, as a basis for a local pageant, possibly. But when it interferes with the proper economic agricultural development of the country... Has it I... occurred to you, Finch, that in spite of the deplorable state of their agriculture, there are a number of very prosperous-looking residences in these parts? Well, it was a bad old lawless smuggling days, no doubt. Precisely. <laughs> That's very romantic. What do we contact first? The chairman of the Corporation of the Liberty. <laughs> Ah, good morning, my man. Good morning. Uh, we're from the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, perhaps you can help us. I'm Customs and Excise, myself. Board of Trade. Oh, excellent, then I'm sure you can help us. We want to know the name of the chairman of the Corporation of the Liberty of uh, and Derrida Marsh. Oh, him? You mean the... <laughs> ah, oh! The chairman? You mean Colonel Gill? We marsh farmers made this land. Pinched it from the sea inch by inch. Then put up a wall to keep the sea out. Took a devil of a lot of work and money. And generations of fellows... There's nothing to laugh at. Oh, I'm not laughing. It's just the way my face is made. Everybody thinks that. Oh. And well, that's why the king gave us our charter. Let us off a few taxes. Allowed us to appoint our own justices and so forth. And that's why it's called the liberty. And now these white old Johnnies are going to tell us how to farm it, are they? <laughs> you know, there's little point in my giving you an interview, young woman, if you don't trouble to write it down. I'm so sorry. My leg upset you? No, no, not at all. Keep meaning to oil it. Always forget. <laughs> <laughs> it amuses you, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> how long have you been a reporter? Oh, ages. How, how do you get down with Tom Cuffley, the editor? Pretty well. Mm. He's my father. What? Well, well, well. So you're made tough then. Mm. Well, you know, I thought I knew your face. Where have you been all these years? Oh, getting educated. In Scotland, mostly. They wouldn't let me come home during the war. Quite grown up, aren't you? Be getting married next thing you know. Well, that's the general idea, yes. Oh, plenty of time yet. Why not now? Well, uh, why not indeed? Uh, why not me, please? Well, uh... I think there's too much difference in our ages. <laughs> oh, very true. If I were only a few years younger... Well, what about young Sam Everard? Too sentimental. He wants to hold hands all the time. I can't be bothered. You seem to me to be unhealthily discriminating, my dear. Oh, I hate messing about. I want to get married. <laughs> well, uh, hadn't we better get on with this interview? Yeah, well, what more do you want to know? Well, what's your plan of campaign? If I catch one of these ministry beggars this side of Burley Gut, I'll run him in for trespass. Oh, that would make a wonderful story. It's almost like the old days with the customs officers. Customs officers? What do you mean? Well, uh, the smugglers used to bribe them, didn't they? Oh, uh, can't do that sort of thing nowadays. Oh, no, no, of course not. Oh, that sort of thing's dead and done with long ago, that sort of thing. Yes. It's rather a shame, really. Yeah, a bad business. Oh, I'm glad you agree. No, 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 I meant the smuggling. Oh. Well, I must be going. I'll send you a proof before publication. Yeah, thank you, my dear. I've enjoyed our little chat. Oh, this is Mrs. Bush, who rules the household. How do you do? And this is Whiskey, who rules Mrs. Bush. Hello, Whiskey. You're a fine fella. Fell on my foot. He produced six little chota pigs in the linen cupboard last Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Colonel Gill. Goodbye. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. Too early. 
Won't open for half an hour yet. I don't want to drink. Beg pardon, I'm sure. I have such a monumental thirst myself, I imagine... Well, you he... imagined wrong. I'm looking for Mr. Wicks. Do you know where he is? I don't know. I expect he's down in the cellar, watering the beer. Mr. Wicks is a very honest man. I'm quite sure he isn't doing that. Oh, you, uh, you know him then, do you? Better than I know you. Who are you, anyway? Just a sailor. Who are you? Just a girl. Sailor and a girl. Sounds like a good basis for a song or for, well, almost anything. You must have a drink. I'm sorry, I don't drink with strangers. Then I must introduce myself. My name's Hammond. Robert Hammond. Mine's Cuffley. Meg Cuffley. Oh, Tom Cuffley's daughter? Yes, do you know him? Yes, a bit. Oh, well, that's different. Look, I want to find out all about three men from London who are staying here. Three men? It's a bit wholesale, isn't it? Please don't be facetious. This is most important. I'm a reporter. I want to interview them. A reporter? One of those people who go around snooping. Huh, that's a very rude way of describing it. I don't like people with long noses. Especially girls. Do I understand that you are refusing to cooperate? No, 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 not in the least, my dear fellow. Well, of course, I can't answer for the others. They're an independent lot. Uh, they, uh, they might appeal to the corporation, for instance. The uh, corporation, as you call it, has no executive power and is no longer recognized by the state. Uh, possibly, but the question is, do the people recognize it? To which I can only answer, they do. Indeed, for many of them, the council of the corporation is the government. That is quite beside the point. Well, well, please yourself. But you don't want to get run in for trespass, do you? Trespass? Really, I don't think you understand the functions of a magistrate. We are members of a government subcommission. And we still have the right to elect our own magistrates, Mr. Finch. That's one of the few privileges remaining to the council. That and the power to seize wrecks on the beaches. Oh, uh, we also have a charter day. With so little work on the land, Colonel Gill, what do all the able-bodied men do with that time? Oh, there's always work to do on the farm, you know. Though there's affection be token. They're here, Dad. I saw them. I saw Colonel Gill, too. He's rather a pet. The way you were carrying on, one of you seen Clark Gable. It's going to be a terrific battle. Can I have it all to myself? As our only reporter, I think that's quite likely. Thank you. Just for that, I'll go duck shooting with you tomorrow. All right, then. I'll get your gun ready. Dad, do you know a man called Hammond? Bob Hammond? Yes, likely. Why? What does he do? He's a fisherman, as far as I know, runs a small trawler over at Rye. Is that all he does? To the best of my knowledge. What is all this? Are you fallen for it? No, of course not, but he seems such a funny man to be a fisherman. I don't see why. You know long ago when the sea went back and the harbour dried up? Mm-hmm. Where did the boatmen unload their cargoes? Into punts and poled them out the creeks and the marshes, I believe. But, hey, what's all this got to do with the government subcommission? Nothing. Nothing at all. And stop pestering me with questions. I'm busy. Now mind you're up and ready tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. Warm clothes and gumboots. You better borrow that old sweater of mine. It will be cold. I'll drop you here, me. It's a good spot. If they're flying high, aim a good two fingers in front. Got your coffee? Yes. Right. Then I'll get along to my own pitch. Enjoy yourself. Right.
Chaps, just in time. Fully light in two minutes. If you come in here, I shall shoot. What are you doing down there? Mind your own business. This, this gun's loaded. But it is my business, very much my business, Miss Meg Nosy Cuffley. Oh, it is you. But I'll shoot just the same if you come near me. Something tells me you're not to be trusted with firearms. Better give it to me. No! Oh, you're hurting. <sighs> That's better. So you've been snooping again, have you? I saw you in the marsh. And followed us here? Mm-hmm. I see. In that case, you better see it all. In here. Oh, don't worry, I'm not going to lock you in. What's in all these boxes? Wines and spirits. Well, I can see that for myself, but contraband? That's right. I thought so. Gosh, what a story. This is one story you will not publish. And who's going to stop me? Well, in the first place, it wouldn't be news to most of your readers. Oh? How long has it been going on? At a guess, I'd say five, six, seven hundred years. How thrilling. Of course, I knew you weren't just an ordinary fisherman. You newspaper people are very astute. Well, the more you know now, the better, really. Oh? Why? So you won't follow me about anymore. I'm afraid you've torn it now, properly. How? Well, you see, I've become an accomplice, haven't I? Good Lord. Does that mean you're threatening to become a permanent nuisance? Yes, I'm afraid it does. Morning, Captain Biddle. Morning. Good catch. Midland. Yes, it's the weather. Brightens them down. Don't like the look of it myself. Very nasty. How's your cold, Mr. Hewitt? Just the same. Two years I've had it now. Where's your Mr. Hammond this morning, Captain Biddle? Mr. Hammond? Uh, nipped ashore for a bite to eat and a cup of coffee. No, he hadn't ought to have done that. Well, we wasn't expecting you so early. Uh, caught us on the op. <laughs> oh, that's him coming now. We told you there'd be trouble nipping ashore for a cup of coffee, like right then? Uh, entirely my fault, Mr. Hewitt. Shouldn't go ashore, you know, not before inspection. Regulations of customs house. Just so, Mr. Hewitt. You ought to be ashamed. Well, well. Let's have a look at this catch of yours. Certainly. Get the cover off, Fred. Hmm. Much the same as the last catch. Fish, Mr. Hewitt, like sheep and lily whites, look very much the same. Yes, I do so they do. Well, that'll be all for this morning. Good day, Captain Biddle. Good day, Mr. Hewitt. Good day, Mr. Hewitt. 
How long have those fish been in the hole, Cedric? A couple of days. How long, Cedric? About a week. You it hasn't smelled anything for years. Didn't you do a trawl on the way back from the marshes? We did, and it was a waste of time. Fishing has to be taken seriously, or the creatures don't participate. Everything in order, Robert? As far as I know. We detect a certain uneasiness in your manner. How about some coffee? Fred, bring two cups of coffee. We were followed to the Abbey by a girl. What sort of girl? A young girl. Quite a pretty girl. She represents a newspaper, I believe. A lily white? Mm -hmm. And then what? I told her which way the wind blew. Nothing to worry about. She's a marsh girl. It was understood that if either of us ever got mixed up with a lily white in a matter of business, then we'd pack up and go home. We gave a solemn promise. I remember it well. Once, a considerable time ago, we was married to a lily white. You told me. So far as we are aware, we still are. What happened? She left us for a quartermaster of the buffs. A very inferior fellow to our way of thinking. What did you do about it? Personally, we rejoiced. Any idea what happened to the lady? We heard she'd settled down somewhere in the south with a herd of cows and the quartermaster sergeant. What's the moral of all this, Cedric? We look back on the business with great surprise at ourselves. If ever a thing was a man's own fault, that was. We talked ourselves into it. We told ourselves that we loved her, and we believed it. We endowed her with beauty of body and soul greater than she or any other Lily White could ever possess. There's men doing it all the time, Robert, talking themselves up the aisle. And what does a Lily White have to do? Nothing, nothing at all. Just sit tight and let the fool talk. What then, when he's done it? Then, he spends the rest of his life blaming her for not being what he told her she was. It's pitiful to watch, Robert. Pitiful. That's the moral, Robert. I wish Paddo wouldn't go wandering off on his own. He said something about a chat with a coast guard. What on earth for? Oh, I suppose he's fond of coast guards. I wish I didn't find him quite so chilling. Oh. Uh, we're from the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. Oh, please come inside, gentlemen. Make yourselves comfortable, gentlemen. A drop of brandy? Beer, I should say. Who ever heard of brandy in these days? Mm, thank you. Thank you, no. Mr. Whitley, my minister is not satisfied that the farmers in this area are making the best use of their land. Uh, what's it got to do with your minister? You're not contesting the government's interest in feeding the people, I presume? Very good thing. The people are starving, poor devils. Now, assuming you set aside a certain number of acres for grazing, is there any reason why the rest of it shouldn't be turned over and sown with, for example, potatoes? Never touch them. Oh? Why? Starchy. Good morning, Coast Guard. Uh-huh. I'm from the Agricultural Subcommission. We're having a look round, you know. What's your name? A Prudhoe. Arthur Mull. P-R-U-D-H-O-E. Well, how do you find things in the marsh? Depends how they got lost. That's not quite what I meant. I mean your job. I always like to contact the man on the job. Very kind of you, I'm sure. Not at all. Is there anything wrong? Wrong? You seem rather angry. You find it rather dull out here, I dare say. Dull? Well, uh, boring, shall we say. Sitting alone here all day, you get a little, well, cross about it. I am cross. It's my teeth. <laughs> oh, your teeth. You see, there's that there wall to watch. It's not a very exhilarating pastime, I imagine. There's a hole in it. Indeed. I hadn't observed one. Aye, where the entrance to Portnoy Arbor used to be. Oh, yes, of course. And, of course, there's the flotsam. Oh, yes, the flotsam. Mm. Mm. And the ships? <laughs> always be, always be. Remarkable. I'd never realized. Something happening all the time. 
What with the sea and the ships and the wall and the flotsam. And, of course, the smugglers. By Jove, look at that door. Wonderful piece of Lake Norman. Come along, Fisherwick. This is not an archaeological ramble. Extraordinary. I'm told the fishermen used to tie their boats to the churchyard wall in the old days. That was before the sea went back, of course. Extraordinary, perhaps, but hardly relevant to the matter in hand. No. But still, this farm that we're going to visit must lie at the bottom of the original old harbour. Hmm. And the sewage, probably. Really, Fisherwick? Hmm? I don't need to go into details. No, oh, I'm sorry. Hello, old girl. Come on. Come along, Fisherwick. <laughs> Seems to be deserted. Nonsense, there must be somebody about. I don't intend to be put off easily. What do you want? Ah, uh, Mr. Beanbridge. What do you want? We are the subcommission from the Ministry of Agriculture. We are inspecting the farms in this area. You won't inspect mine. <coughs> Perhaps we can have a little talk. Get off my land. I beg your pardon, sir. I said get off my land. We are here on government business, Mr. Bainbridge. If you don't get off my land, I shall have the law on you. Nonsense. We are here to investigate your ability to farm this holding. Are you getting off my land, or do I have to drive you off? Get out of it! Ooh. Ooh. Come on! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Government officials, I'll show them. <laughs> now, what are you grinning at? Now, listen to me, Polly. I listened to you once before. Go and clean out the cow shed. I'll clean out the cow shed when I think fit. Please yourself, Joseph. <laughs> Evening, Colonel. Oh, I'm glad you've come, Robert. I wanted to talk to you. Urquhart's been here. Look at the Coast Guard. Is something wrong? Not yet, but it's getting dangerous. Does Urquhart suspect? I thought he was being kept out of it. Never been told a word to my knowledge. Don't want to involve the local officials. They've too much at stake. Well, then? It's this infernal subcommission. They're getting nosy. That fellow, Prudhoe, a sloop if ever I saw one, dropped in on Urquhart this morning. Been talking to Constable Pettigrew, too. Have a drink? Thank you. Do you know a girl called Meg Cuffley? Indeed I do. Tom Cuffley's daughter. She followed us to the Abbey last time. I had to tell her the whole story. Blast it. Tom wanted her kept out of this. She's all right. A real marsh girl. Now, you know what this means, Robert. It's all got to stop now. Yes. There's another shipment waiting in the nets. It was too late to stop it. Well, can't we leave it in the nets? Mm, seems such a pity. There'd be some bottles of Napoleon brandy among it. Genuine? Usually reliable. By George, a shame to keep that in the sea for long. Won't do it any good. No. Well, it'll have to be the last for a bit. Definitely the last. Well, little ought to know what he's doing, but I shouldn't like to be out there on a night like this. The ball would I. Did you see the barometer? Stormy, it says. Hello. Oh, hello. I thought you were on board. Not tonight. I'm glad. Oh, why? Well, there's a sort of funny, broody feeling in the air, as if it were going to be the end of the world or something. And so it is. The end of my little bit of world, anyway. What do you mean? This is the last trip. What? Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. Just when I'm getting nicely involved in it. That's the point. Well, I think it's me. Nobody ever lets me do anything. Much better that way. What are you going to do now? I haven't thought. Go away somewhere, I suppose. And what am I expected to do? Well, now, let's see. Uh, I would suggest... Don't say it, I know. Pick myself a nice young man, get married and settle down. It was on the tip of my tongue. Oh!
You'd have thought we'd had a drop of decent weather for the last trip, wouldn't you? It'll hold off. Nice no, so how'd you do we went down for the last ship, know, wouldn't it? What with one thing and another, we are very depressed just now. We'd be obliged if you'd shut your trap. <laughs> The punch in the gut? Already. Well, it's up to you then, Robert. You know the job better than me. I'll stay till you've got it ashore, then cut back home. Don't like the look of the weather. Now we're in for a storm. Still, Biddle could ride a hurricane. I hope you're right. Unfortunate. Seeing as this is our last trip and seeing as how we are very depressed, and what with one thing and another, we will fetch a corkscrew. Well, what do you want a corkscrew for? This is Napoleon. We will treat it with proper respect. Here we are. We're interrupting this program for a gale warning. Attention all shipping. Ah, it helps, warning it helps a lot, gale, I must say. Imminent in the sea area of Portsmouth, White... Oh, Portsmouth. very medicinal. A deep depression now situated south of the Lizard. An uncommonly we fine tonic, we agree. Stop. And, and now, if you gentlemen are ready, we will continue. I'll repeat that. A deep depression, now situated south of the Lizard, is moving rapidly up the channel, accompanied by westerly winds of gale force and abnormally high tide. Well, it's a good high tide anyway. Last time we were scraping the bottom. Listen to that. Did you ever hear anything like that before? And they shouldn't be long now. I don't like the feel of things, Robert. But how did he get here? What's he doing? Like full steam ahead. Two busted one tank. If we was to give one to the skipper and one to Siggy, and half one for ourselves, for medicinal purposes, that'd leave six. Then we could call it half a case, see? There'd be some sense in half a case. Well, nobody wants odd numbers. Nobody. Look, Robert, the sea, coming right up here. They'll never get ashore in this weather. We better get out of here. Get the men together. What will Biddle do? Dump the stuff in the sea and run for port.
It's all right, don't fret. We'll get you out of here in two shakes as soon as the storm drops. I couldn't get out when the tree fell. Well, I must have been terrified. I wasn't frightened. I just couldn't get out. Poor darling. I heard my knee coming in. What? Let's see. Oh, it's nothing. It's only a scratch. No, Miss Cupid, it ought to be bound up. Here, hold the torch. For goodness sake, relax. I'm not going to eat you. There you are. I said you'd become a permanent nuisance, didn't I? Yes. What's the matter? Nothing. There's a ship in the duck pond. Joseph! There's a ship in the duck pond. What? Pretty spot. I'll have you up for trespass. I'll put the police on you. There's going to be trouble over this. We've seen your face before somewhere. I'll show you. I know my rights. Never in all my life. I love the law on him. What's going on, Mr. Biddle? How, how do we get here? That problem is at present occupying our attention, Fred. It would appear that we are marooned. of Biddle in Rye, where the devil could he have got to? It looks as if they've had it. Is this the vessel in question? Of course it is. How many do you think there are? Half a dozen? It might be so, Mr. Bainbridge. It might well be so. Is there a ladder at hand? <laughs> huh? 
There'll be no need for you to mount, Mr. Bainbridge, at this stage. This is a very unfortunate position to find yourself in, Captain. I'll have to take some particulars. Name? Biddle. Biddle. Fixed abode? What place is this? Portnoy, Captain. Fixed abode, Portnoy. Portnoy. Cargo? A fish. That's right. Fish. Fish. We haven't tried Dover yet. Hello, Meg, my dear. You are disgustingly bright and early. The frolic is in the harbour. Hey, what harbour? Here in Portnoy Harbour. The events of the night have turned her mind. I saw it with my own eyes, I tell you. In Bainbridge's meadow, high and dry. Good God, it must have been washed up on that monster tide. Were there any bodies? Bodies? Well, all the crew are on board, if that's what you mean. Alive? Haven't you arrested him? It's trespass! What about my matter? Didn't you order him to get off? Pending reference of the matter to the justices, Mr. Bainbridge, I have deemed it my duty to instruct Captain Biddle that the boat must on no account be moved from its present position. I'll report you. I'll have you up for this. The law is the law, Mr. Bainbridge, come what may. Just we are the object of considerable amusement. Who is it? A lily white by the name of Polly. She seems to know you. She should. She is our wife. Oh, hi there! Good morning, sir. Good morning, Captain. Well, it's no good asking you how you got in here. The question is, how in thunder are you ever going to get out? Hello, Bill. Am I glad to see you? The Colonel's right, though. What are we going to do? We have the matter under consideration. It'll not be difficult. It's a question of building a slipway. A what? A slipway across the fields to the sea wall. Then with a system of pulleys, block and tackle. And who do you suppose is going to do that for us? Mr. Bainbridge. And who is Mr. Bainbridge? Mr. Bainbridge is the owner of our present anchorage. He will go to some trouble to remove us. I'm dashed if I can see why he should. You'll find that he will. Yes, you'll find that he will. Cedric, what have you got on Bainbridge? Trespass. Well, that's our fault, not his, surely. Trespass, his. Once we had a wife by the name of Polly. She left us for a certain quartermaster sergeant. Good heavens. You don't mean that Polly Bainbridge is your... Great Scott. These things are in the stars. You'll find that Mr. Bainbridge will be pleased to build us a slipway. I suppose he will, which I doubt. Who's going to pay for it? For the matter of funds, we propose to have recourse to... Bottomry. What? Hey. When a ship finds itself in a foreign port without the means to proceed elsewhere, the master is permitted to borrow money ashore from any party on security of the ship and its contents. The maritime contract known as Bottomry. And who do you suppose is going to advance money on a land-bound wreck? We were thinking of Colonel Gill. You were, were you? And where's the security? In the hold. You mean you didn't dump the stuff overboard? Certainly not. We always deliver our cargoes. We will now leave you to talk over the details. We ourselves will visit Mr. Bainbridge. Cedric, you are without question the biggest scoundrel I've ever met in my life. The 
Got to get rid of that cargo at once. Can't be done, Robert. Every nosy parker in the county will be hanging around this rick. Nosy parkers get, I'd forgotten the subcommission, where they'll be buzzing around like horseflies. Well, they must be kept away at all costs. Well, what about the corporation? Can't they do anything? The bailiff sergeant. Who's he? The seizing officer for the corporation. All wrecks belong by charter to the Corporation of the Liberty. Come on, my boy. <laughs> Ah, we've come to have a little chat. Get out! Which is the parlor? Mm -hmm. Sit down. About the removal of our ship, we would like to get it refloated without delay. You'd better! Sit down. Let's talk it over. As we see it, it's a matter of constructing a slipway. The job should present very few difficulties to a man of action, such as yourself. You mean I'm expected to... Just so. ...to shift a boat? We understand one another very well. Get out. Get out! We take it that you haven't yet discussed the matter with the lady of the house. Do I have to fetch a shotgun to you? Once we knew a fellow like you, Looked like you, talked like you. Acted pretty much the same. He was a soldier of sorts, a kind of quartermaster sergeant. He took a fancy to a certain lily white known to us. Thought a lot of himself to this fellow. Finally, he got what he wanted and the lily white listened. Left a deeply devoted husband. Who are you? To tell you the truth, we were not quite so mortified as some folks thought we should ought to have been. But no matter. When you are ready to discuss the construction of the slipway, we should be pleased to listen. breakfast now. It's ready, Cedric. Excuse me. Make way for the bailiff uh, sergeant. Excuse me. <laughs> Hold the rig! Hello? Hello? Ship ahoy. Do you want something? Oh, pardon me. Are you the captain? No, he's ashore. My name's Rigby. I'm the bailiff sergeant. Come again? The bailiff sergeant. I seize vessels on behalf of the council of the corporation. Oh. Oh, you do, do you? Mm. If you'll let down the ladder, I'll come aboard. Ah, look, chum, whose idea was all this? Well, if you really want to know, it started with Henry III. Oh. Well, look, you go back to Henry and tell him to mind his own business. Uh, I'm afraid you don't quite understand. Hello. Who's this joker? Oh, this is the sergeant of the bailiff. Oh, morning, Sarge. Good morning. He's come to see us on behalf of the corporation. Go on. Mm. Ah, good man, Reesby. You haven't wasted much time. Everything in order? Well, uh, no, not exactly. Why, what's the trouble? Having a little difficulty getting aboard, sir. Oh, yes, I, I see. Yes. Well, uh, uh, strictly speaking, you should go aboard, of course, but uh, in the circumstances, it, it must be a painful experience for the crew, you know. And, well, we don't want to hurt their feelings. Uh, naturally, they're a bit sensitive. Yes, sir. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, you better sit tight down here and don't let anyone else come near. The corporation's solidly behind you, Rigby. Thank you, sir. Have you lost something? Sir, I was wondering, would it be an order if I went home to fetch a stool and a bite to eat later on? Oh, certainly. Capital idea. I'll hold the fort till you get back. Now, you better cut along now. Thank you, sir. That's a 
astonishing. She must have been whipped over the seawall and plumped down in the old harbor by the storm. It was certainly a wild night. I but... think we should investigate. Well, it's nothing to do with us. I've been checking up on one or two things lately, Finch. I think it might be interesting to go aboard. Oh, do you think they'd let us? It's a trawler, isn't it? And we are the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. Nothing will induce me to stay near this place without police protection. Very well. But I shall make it my business to see that the Customs and Coast Guard are advised. You know, Fisherwick, I wish I liked Puddo better. <laughs> We inquire the purpose of these activities. Now, we've got to ship that liquor, Cedric. We already have the matter in hand. And we can't risk waiting while you build a slipway, Cedric. We've got to empty her now. And who will pay to refloat an empty vessel? You sure you're going to want to refloat her? Now? Knowing ourselves as we do, that is what we are afraid of. When do we get that hatch open? Get down in the hold and start passing up the crates. Uh, you men break open the crates, transfer the bottles into the fish boxes. Now, we've got to look slippy. We haven't much time. So far, so good. Yeah, this is a great and grievous mistake, gentlemen. Sorry, Captain. But it seemed to us to be more practicable than uh, a bottomry. Now, those three white old vultures were here just now. On board? Good God, no. But I don't trust them, Robert. Hello. Meg. I've come to interview the shipwrecked mariners. The Lily White. We might have known. Meg, you can't stay here. Why not? I'm from the Indiana Depot. But don't you realize the ship's still full of smuggled liquor? Yes, so I see. You're not to get mixed up in this. You're to keep away, right away. It's a bit late for that now, isn't it? I brought you some sandwiches. They're tomato. You're a remarkably cool young woman. I know what I'm about, Colonel Gill. Yes, I believe you do. Oh, by the way, I passed that old Coast Guard chappy, Urquhart, in the lane. I think it was on his way here. What? That's brute. Get that stuff back in the hole as quickly as you can. In you get. We said this was a mistake. Oh. Yes, who are you? Coast Guard. And what can we do for you? You're seized. Is that so? Aye, wrecks is salvage. Salvage belongs for the trade. We are not aware of any wrecks in this vicinity. The laws of salvage says... This boat is not salvage. Oh, there you are, Captain Biddle. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Urquhart. I've got to board this vessel. Aye? The ship has already been seized, Mr. Hewitt. What's that? You heard what he said. But, Captain Biddle... Don't blame us, Mr. Hewitt. Blame the Board of Trade. That's right. Now perhaps I can get on with my job. Look here, Mr. Urquhart. You know that any ship entering the British port is liable to customs inspection. And furthermore, any contraband... The is salvage, and salvage belongs to the Board of Trade. Do you let go of my foot? What do you... Listen, if you interfere with the regulations... Excuse me. I... Excuse me, gentlemen. The ship's already seized. I Who it? says so? I got here first. I just went back to my stool. I seized it. Yeah, who gave him the right to go around seizing ships? Henry III, we understand. Now, look here. Nobody boards that vessel while I'm here to prevent it. Nor will you. That I'll promise. Ah, well, if you stay, I stay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> shift a bottle so long as these officials are camped under the bows. Nor while Mrs. Finch, Fisherwick, and Prodder were at large. And somehow we've got to find means of removing the lot. Such as, you know, there's one monumental fact staring me in the face the whole time. 
What do you do with liquor? You drink it. Drink it. A whole cargo? Well, that's the rub. It'd need half the male population of the Liberty. And you still haven't got rid of the officials under the bows, or it can't be done. Least of all tomorrow. Don't forget it's Charter Day and the first day of petty sessions. By Gad, so it is. Clever girl. Now, why didn't I think of that before? Petty sessions, Robert. All right, there's no need to rub it in. Are you game to take a long shot? I'll try anything once. Good. Meg, my dear, look me up the phone number of Constable Pettigrew. The plain fact of the matter is, Constable, that my colleagues were assaulted by this man Bainbridge in the execution of their duties. Do you wish to prefer a charter? No, though we should be well within our rights. However, we prefer to cultivate the goodwill of the local farmers. After all, we're here to try to help them. Quite, sir. No, all we require is your presence for protection when we pay a further visit of inspection in the morning. You can put yourselves in my hands, gentlemen. Splendid. By the way, are you keeping an eye on that wreck? That won't get away neither, sir. Good. I may take the opportunity to go aboard her. Very good, sir. Excuse me, gentlemen. Constable Pettigrew here. Oh, good evening, Colonel. Yes, yes, I understand, sir. Just a little chat, Mr. Bainbridge. Just a little chat with reference to the matter of trespass. What's the game? Game, Mr. Bainbridge. The law isn't a game. The law is the law, as we all know. Are you trying to make a fool out of me? Now, why should I be attempting any such course of action, Mr. Bainbridge? All I say is, if you as the party trespassed wish to take action in the matter, then the law is at your disposal, same as everybody else. What do I have to do? It's a question of laying an information, Mr. Bainbridge. And I've taken the liberty of preparing the necessary documents on your behalf. They're up at the station now, if you care to come. I'll come up with you now. Want to go to the boat? Mm-hmm. Well, jump in. This is death or glory day. Hello, there goes that young man and the girl. You mean Hammond? Yeah. Which way? Towards the harbour. Oh, come along. We must get down there at once. But the constable is... Hang the constable. He'll find us down there. Really, brother? This is not the moment for pusillanimity, Finch. Come along. the law on you. It's you who'll be in trouble, my man. Trouble? Haven't I got trouble enough? That great bull sitting in my house, eating me food night and day, a ship in me duck pond, half the officials in the place camped to my land, and now you again. Clear out, all of you. Go on. Get off my land before I take a fork here. We've come to investigate the disposal of a quantity of fish, Mr. Bainbridge. What's that? Oh, no, you don't. You aren't going aboard this ship. This ship has been seized by me as bailiff sergeant of the Council of the Liberty. Liberty? Fiddlesticks, let me pass. Salvage belongs to the Board of Trade. This is ridiculous. Extraordinary thing. Very curious. The bird must be sick. Poison! Nonsense, man. Who'd want to poison your ducks? Everybody. Everybody in the place. It's me they're after. I know. That 
poison in my pond water. They all hate me. I know. What the devil's going on down there? I know. It's been done deliberate. I'm not a fool. They've been after me for years. Stop talking rubbish, man. Do you smell anything, Fisherwick? Hmm? Yeah, it's rather pleasant. Pleasant? Mm. Be so good as to fill that bottle with water from the pond. Fortunate that you should have a bottle handy, Prado, I must say. I believe in being ready for any eventuality, Finch. Thank you, Fisherwick. I suggest you take this straight away to the chemist for analysis. Well, hurry along, Fisherwick. Meg, stop that at once. I think it's a brilliant idea. We've got rid of ten bottles already. I told you not to get mixed up in all this. Oh, don't let's start that all over again. You realize you cooked our goose. Well, pickled our ducks anyway. I do not propose to wait any longer for this constable. I'm going to search the ship. The Council of the Liberty. The board of trade. Regulations of the customs. Are... I represent the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, the senior minister. I believe leave go of me. Come on, Finch. If this ship is found to contain contraband, you'll all be held as accessories, and your threats will avail you nothing. Nothing. Applications to go aboard. Oh, uh, were you looking for someone? Not someone, young man. In my capacity as a member of a government subcommission, I propose to search this ship. Oh, uh, perhaps you'll be good enough to conduct me first of all to the main cabin. Nobody's got no right to board a ship what's been seized by the Coast Guard in a proper manner according to the regulations. No. This ship has to be put up for auction and the proceeds credited to the funds of the council. Yes. <laughs> I've had enough. Get off my land, all of you. And take your ship with you. Stay off and leave me alone. Ah, oh, Constable. Just in time. Good morning, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. So you've come at last. Constable, these men have abstracted me from boarding this vessel. My colleagues and I have made an important discovery. Is that I... so, sir? Well, we must just attend to that matter later. Later? It's my duty to inform you, sir, and these other gentlemen present, that a charge of trespass has been brought. Trespass? That's right, sir. It's just a question of serving out the summonses as laid down. One for you, Mr. Finch. Mr. Rigby. Mr. Hewitt and Mr. Urquhart. <laughs> we will now examine the hold. Oh, the, uh, the hold, Mr. Prado? If you please. Oh, well, I'm afraid the uh, catch is a little stale. We weren't allowed to unload it. No doubt, no doubt. Well, I shall uh, have to get the hatch covers lifted. Kindly do so at once. Uh, yes. Mr. Hammond. I've given an order. Oh, very well. A very timely appearance, Constable. Oh, thank you, sir. I have here a summons to be served in you, sir. Oh, what? A summons for trespass, sir. Ah, oh, there we are. The justices will be sitting shortly, so the matter can be dealt with prompt at the petty sessions. We've no time to lose. Come along, sir, please. But this is outrageous. All in good time, sir. I shall speak to the minister. All in good time. You'll have to answer for this idiocy, Constable. All in Never good time. Hold my experience sir. as a government servant. Never in my life was such a monstrous charge. The analysis will be ready this afternoon. Hello, something wrong? Wrong? <laughs> We've been summoned for trespass, that's all. Trespass? That's what I said, Fisherwick. Well, and that goes for you, too. Now then, gentlemen, no time to lose. Hello, Come here, Constable. Why did you take to us like that? That's right. Quiet, everybody, please. Come along quietly. That's right. All right, all right. Come here, Constable. Don't you talk to me like that. Nice and quiet. Nice and quiet. What is it, dear? It would appear that the law has taken that assorted rabble of bureaucrats into custody. Gentlemen, all nice and orderly, all nice and orderly. Does that mean you'll be leaving now, Cedric? As soon as we have procured a slipway, a few stout horses, chain, tackle, 20 fathoms of good rope, all of which your Mr. Bainbridge has so obligingly agreed to provide, we are off. Furthermore, we shall be forsaking hard liquor until the frolic is afloat again. Cedric? Yes, my dear? You're sure you really want to go away? That hmm? is our declared intention.
May it please the court. A case of trespass. I wish to make a protest. Order! Who's that fellow? Before this farce is proceeded with, I have something to say. Now then, now then. This is a court of law. Conduct yourself accordingly. Is it really necessary to deal with all these people at once? Ah, uh, for the purpose of reading the charge, Your Worship. Oh, very well then, very well. Proceed. The charge is that you, Herbert Finch, Roderick Fisherwick, Spencer Proddo, James Urquhart, Hubert Hewitt, and Edgar Rigby, on Thursday the 19th, did knowingly commit a trespass on the lands known as Old Harbour Meadow, the property of one Joseph Bainbridge, do you each and respectively plead guilty or not guilty to this charge? May I be permitted to speak now? Certainly not. So far, so good. Pray, heaven, they spin it out. How long do you think we've got? With a lot of luck, an hour and a half. You better go and start a movie, Robert. We'll go down to the ship. Hop in, Meg. three hours. Well, even our justices can't spin out a case of trespass for three hours, Robert. Rather put your trust in the men of the marsh. I'd feel better if they begin to turn up. Look, there's someone coming now. Get these bottles uncorked. How much longer is this going on? The justices has to consider. They've been out an hour already. How much longer am I to be kept here like a common thief? Right up. considerable time to this case since it would appear to be without precedent, at least as far as the records of this court. In July of the year 1723, a riding officer of His Majesty's customs was hanged uh, in error uh, following a conviction for the theft of a sheep. Unfortunately, we have no other record of uh, trespass by government officials. Be that as it may, however, the laws relating to private property are sufficiently well known in this country. There can be no excuse for disregarding them. Am I going too fast for you? Not at all, Your Honor. <laughs> Bless our charter. Just a minute, boys. Just a minute, please. You've had enough. I reckon I can have another drop for the liberty. 
Brotherhood Robert is a very live conception in the marsh. On the other hand, there may be extenuating circumstances, as indeed the defendants pleaded, to wit necessity, the requirements of an official investigation in the case of three of the defendants and of the, of the pursuit of duty in the case of the other three. But it will be remembered, an exactly similar plea was offered by the defendants at Nuremberg. And what happened to them? What we have to decide then, and it is the opinion of the bench that trespass was indeed committed, uh, brackets there, what we have to decide is whether the defendants presumed on their rights as officials, whether, since those set in authority should uh, set an example, uh, whether it does not behove them to be doubly circumspect. Uh, doubly circumspect. Where did I get to? Doubly circumspect? No, 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 no. Why don't you pay attention? I must request an immediate adjournment. Important evidence has come to light. What's that? We've already heard the evidence. There is a ship in the harbour. Nonsense! The harbour died up hundreds of years ago. Don't interrupt anymore. Now, there may be circumstances... Royal Prerogative must set an example. You know, the trouble is, chaps coming on won't let the other fellows off. It won't do to let them get really pickled. What we need is another ladder. Oh, no time. What's the windlass for? Hoist away there, singing. So the bench has decided to take the most lenient possible view in the circumstances, to wit, that you are all guilty of a lamentable breach of good manners. No more than that. You are therefore discharged, but... Uh, hold it, hold it. But to avoid the possibility of the issue of another summons, the bench is prepared to issue you all certificates of autrefois a key under the Offences Against the Persons Act of 1861. <clears throat> Will you kindly make out six certificates of autrefois a key? While that is being done, the court would like to take the opportunity of complimenting Constable Pettigrew. How long must we wait for these, these certificates? Goodness knows. How many have you got left? About a dozen. All right, give me one. Meg, what are you doing here? I've forgotten all about you. I've come to do my bit. Not on your life, you haven't. Oh, don't be silly. I can drink with the best of them. Not here, you can't. Can't I? Oh, it's the way, Siggy. <laughs> Almost all gone, Siggy. Help! Better take your chance. Help! Let me down! Help! Help! Let me down! Let me down! Help! Help! Let me down! Which way? Oh. Oh, which way to the harbour? This way. way. Oh. Gentlemen. The last bottle. Well, I reckon we ought to say that one for Captain Biddle. Yeah, there. Where is she? Captain Biddle has got wider interests ashore to attend to. Four shots for sixpence, nine for a bob. Now, show the pretty lady what you can do. There you are. How many for the prize? Eight or more to win. Eight or more to win? Yeah. Right. Miss. <laughs> the apparatus is at fault. Of course it ain't. Worked perfectly. I'll have another go. Robert! Huh? Help! Help! Meg, I must look an awful sight. You look wonderful to me. The enemy approaches. Get rid of this bottle, quick. I don't want it. I don't want it. Alf! Well, I don't want it. Do something with it. Oh, here, yeah, Robert, catch! Yeah, what was that? Alf, move, Fisherwick. Oh. For the liberty, my dear. For the liberty! Governor, five bob and see for the price. The Hawkman, 
Which way did he go? The horseman, sir. Which horseman? Go! Hey, give me that bottle! Sergeant, hand over that bottle. Just you watch me, Cedric. As an official of the government, Sergeant, I order you to hand over that bottle. Get the car, Fisherwick. Hmm? We're leaving here. Oh. These people don't deserve to be governed. Thank <laughs> you.